This definition that we're working on is going to give us a different way of thinking about when a, a matrix is non-singular. OK, so we're going to talk about the inverse of a square matrix. So let A be R n times n. We say A, the matrix A, is what we call invertible if and only if there is a matrix C element of R n times n such that, could you guess what would happen if I multiply a matrix by the thing called its inverse? Could you guess what we get out of that? The identity matrix of what size? I n. And this is one of the really, really interesting things about matrix inverses. Generally, what do we say when we multiply a matrix on the left to a matrix on the right? Is that equal when, when we flip it? Not usually, but you know what's really funny about a matrix inverse, right? You could think about it as commutative. In other words, if I multiply on the right-hand side by, by the inverse, it's actually equivalent to multiplying on the left-hand side. In both cases, the matrices cancel out, right? Um, we say C is going to be the inverse of A. An invertible matrix is called non-singular. I've had a question since I was a young. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in the case of like whatever you do to the left side, you have to do the right side. If you multiply an inverse of say A and then you multiply it on the left by C, if you move to the other side of the equal sign, do you have also have to multiply it on the left on that side? Yeah, so you're you're jumping a little bit ahead of strategy. Okay. Pretend for a moment. Pretend inverses are gifts from the linear algebra gods, which someday I hope you will join those ranks. Right? So in other words, pretend that if you have a matrix A, somehow just the inverse appears. It's not going to happen. Inverses to the, the sad reality of inverses is we generally never use them because they're very, very expensive to actually calculate. You'll see them in your early days as a way to introduce the concept of non-singularity. You'll see them as a way to, there's a very, very famous inverse rule, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But pretend for a moment that you know this thing is non-singular. What does non-singular mean? What's another way to say non-singular? Invertible. What's another way to say invertible? What does it mean for a matrix to be invertible? It has an inverse, right? So this thing is non-singular, AKA invertible. And somehow I'm just sitting there and an inverse just falls on my lap, right? In other words, if I take A inverse and I multiply on the left-hand side, what's the claim? Multiply on the right-hand side, what did we say about A inverse times A? That's the identity matrix. And if I could do this, what does that immediately imply about the solution to the linear systems problem? Where does it come from, if I could do this? What type of operation is that? Matrix vector multiplication, which means if inverses fell from the sky and were just gifted, I just thought like, oh, may I have an inverse? Every linear systems problem is trivial, right? Because every linear system problem is just a solution to the corresponding matrix vector multiplication problem. Sad truth. Inverses don't fall from the sky. Finding them is non-trivial. In fact, in the development of the algorithm that we used in Gaussian elimination, we've actually developed a much more sophisticated algorithm, even though a mathematician would say, I'm done. And then an engineer would say, but where's the inverse? And the mathematician would say, it's right there. I've written it. <laughs> right? yeah. The difference between living on a prayer and doing something useful, right?